Welcome back to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug, and thanks for joining me for another Pen Resurrection Sunday. Today's cadaver on the slab is this Schaefer Balance 500 vacuum filler. There's no way to find a specific date of manufacture for this pen, but it would have been made between 1936, when the Schaefer vacuum fill system was introduced, and 1942, when the balance model was retired. The pen's material is celluloid that Schaefer called golden brown. This is a full-length, standard girth 500 model. The 500 can be seen just below the imprint, very faintly right there, 500. And the imprint says, W.A. Schaefer Pen Company, Fort Madison, Iowa, USA, patented in USA. The 500 isn't actually a model name, it's the price at $5 US. This was a non-lifetime, more economical version of the pen. The lifetime version was $10 and had 1,000 printed on the barrel and also included a Schaefer white dot right there above the clip, which indicated the lifetime warranty. The Schaefer balance was introduced in 1929 and took the pen world by storm. Before the balance, most pens were cylindrical and made out of ebonite. Schaefer made a pen that was made out of celluloid in some really wonderful finishes and was a revolutionary shape the torpedo shape. We are so used to this pen shape almost 100 years later that it's hard to appreciate the reaction from the fountain pen buying public at the time. It was a huge hit and this basic design, the torpedo shape, still exists today. Okay, let's triage this Schaefer Balance Vac Filler. It's got a number of things wrong with it, not least of which its finish is pretty rough. Lots of scratches and gouges. Uh, the gold's in good shape. The line cap is not. There's a big gouge there and the threads are gone. Not off of the blind cap but off of the threads of the filler unit. That's a seal right there. It looks like someone tried to get this out of here uh, and mangled uh, the threads so that no longer will thread back on there and it moves really freely. I don't think there's a rubber washer in there, rubber gasket on the end of that uh, vac filler. Let's take off the cap here and we see we have a number five feather touch nib, Schaefer feather touch. The feather touch was a patented feature of Schaefer. The feather touch has platinum plating on the inside uh, slits of the nib slit. Uh, so apparently it's supposed to improve the ink flow. But that's a beautiful two-tone nib and it looks like it's in good shape and has some bounce to it. Ebonite feed ebonite section and the imprints are still very visible it says wa schaefer pen company fort madison iowa usa patented in usa and 500 i can roughly date this pen from 1936 through 1942 it's a balance it's a 500 balance this is a full length standard girth so that's five and three eighths inches long by 0.469 inches in thickness, according to Schaefer and according to Richard Binder. And it has the flattened clip here, which was called a radius clip. Seems to be in good shape here. And that's how I know this was made between 1936 and 1942. This color was available in those years. This color is called golden brown. It's a celluloid, striated celluloid. It's quite gorgeous. But we need to get this section off and see whether we can replace the seal, uh, the washer inside that vac to make it work again. This will never work again, I don't think. I'll see what I can do about that. But let's get that section off of there. I've already soaked this pen quite a bit. Soaked it in some pen flush, which is nine parts distilled water and one part ammonia. And I soaked it in my ultrasonic machine and let it sit for Oh, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. So we're going to apply a little bit of heat with my heat gun here. This is celluloid. It has a very low temperature, a melting point. Uh, so we have to be very careful with the heat. So I'm going to heat it and test it, heat it and test it, because the shellac that's holding this section on has a lower melting point than the celluloid, but not by much. So we have to keep testing it to see. Okay, it started to budge. 
And now it's started to budge. I can unscrew it. Good amount of shellac on there. There we go. So you can see all the shellac on those threads. And there's our nib and our feed. Our feed's up inside there. It'd be interesting to try to knock that out. And there's this, it's a special kind of feed that if you bash on it, they're just gonna break the hell out of it. So let's see what's going on here. I can see there's something on the end there. Oh, well, there you go. There is the washer. It is petrified, absolutely like a rock. So that's why that doesn't work. And I have what I think is a replacement yeah, for it right there. So in order to get this out, it won't come out this way. It has to come out the front. And so we need to unscrew the blind cap. These balances were screwed on to the end of that rod, whereas other vac fillers from Schaefer had a metal ring that tightened down on top of that. This is just screwed on here. There we go. There's the blind cap. And so I've got a special tool for this. And this is from Pen Tooling. And this is a rod that screws on the end of the Schaefer vac vacuum knob. Not very well. It's a little bit bent. There we go. It's going out a little bit anyway. And you push it through like that. Now that's easy enough. I could have pulled that out. But when you want to get it back through again once you've replaced that washer you need this to guide it through so I'm just going to take that off for now and that's where that washer was uh, there's a little I'm not sure plastic ebonite I think this is ebonite this might be an ebonite cover on the metal rod I'm not sure I've seen these that they're metal but this just might be ebonite so in order to get that off of there, that was going to require a little bit of heat as well. So we'll just heat that up and then we'll use our mat to unscrew it. We don't want to break this. Okay, I think it's moving. Yep, there we go. We don't want to break or lose this piece. This piece here pushes up against the feed here when the vac is closed all the way and it deflects right into there. And that piece is ebonite, and I don't think you can get replacements for that. So get rid of the old pieces here, and put the new one on, and then we screw that down. Now, some people will put a little bit of shellac on there just to tighten those threads, and it doesn't fall off on the inside of the pen later. I think I'm gonna put some rosin on that. Here's my little jar of section sealant, which is rosin. I got it from Anderson Pens, and it's just like solidified honey. It actually doesn't move at all when it's cool. So there's my rosin brush. It's already coated with some rosin. So I'm going to heat this rosin up. Yeah, it liquefies a little bit. See, that's just like honey. So I'm just going to touch those threads and <laughs> it cools off quickly. I'll touch those threads. Just the threads with a little bit of rosin. And then screw it down. There we go. We're good to go. So now I just got to clean out these parts. Clean out this barrel and see whether I can maybe restore some of those threads. I don't know. I'm going to try to scratch at it with a dental tool. No, it's not possible. Let's get a close up. Uh, this end of the barrel you can see how that's melted so I'm not sure what kind of material that is on these balances I think it's ebonite but it's been melted and gouged and with this large gouge right there uh, some kind of force has been applied to the end of this and so I don't think I'll ever get those threads back again you'd have to replace this piece and I don't think you can replace that with anything other than another balance and whether that piece will actually come out of that barrel anymore either. So I'm hoping that the packing material inside here is still good because I cannot replace that. You have to knock this out and there's a, there's a, a package of a gasket, a washer, a packing material inside there. 
that you have to replace but I can't do that so I've replaced the gasket and I'm going to soak this very very well in some pen flush and my ultrasonic and uh, we'll see if we can get that feed out and then we'll polish up that nib put the pen back together again with that new seal and see whether it draws up ink or not so the issue with knocking out the feed of the section of this uh, Schaefer's Feather Touch uh, vac pen is that the vac feed has this little tail sticking out of it and if you use a regular rod to pound on that you're going to break that ebonite feed tail at the back of there off and it's not going to work so i read up that schaefer technicians originally had a tool that was a tube that went around that feed tail and pressed down on the flat part of the block down below to knock it out and i thought well i could make one of those all i need is something the right diameter and what do you know here's an old parker quink ballpoint refill and i sawed it in two and made a little tool out of the metal tube i think that's steel stainless steel or something like that i cleaned out all the old ink and burnished it smoothed off all the ends and guess what look at that it fits so we get our bills block out here find the right size to put the section in raise our camera up hammer out here I've already soaked this section quite a bit in pen flush and run the ultrasonic on it so I've got most of that old ink out of there so I should be able to knock this out let's find out the proof is in the pudding budging it might be budging put some of my stick tack on here just to make it a little bit more stable there we go i think it worked good god the nib's gone oh there it is and there's the feed no damage that tool worked perfectly there's the section no damage and there's the nib it's the first time I'm seeing the tail, so I'm going to get my loop out to take a look. Yeah, there's nothing that wasn't visible before. It still says Schaefer Feather Touch made in the USA 5, and that's a number 5 nib. Lots of old ink in there, so that's going in the pen flush ultrasonic. All these parts will soak them up, and then we'll see if we can polish up that nib. And the next step will be to see whether I get a vacuum seal on this at all. Actually, I could try that right now. Get my Schaefer vac tool out. Where does he get those cool tools? Where does he get those wonderful toys? Slide that in and attach it to the other end. Easier said than done. There we go. And that'll fit it back through. And we can put our blind cap on temporarily. Yeah. That washer is not even touching the inside, so we need to put a larger one on there. And I had already rosined that shut. So, don't rosin it shut until you know that you've got the right size washer on it, Doug. Okay, now, now we get out the larger one, and we need to heat off that rosin. The good news is that that rosin has a much lower melting temperature than shellac. That came off rather easily. Take that one off. Put the larger one on. Screw it on maybe while the rosin is still tacky. Should have tested this when I first put it on. But no. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? Okay, so repeat the process. Rinse and repeat. There we go. Yep, there we go. So now I've got the, the right seal on there. I can put my thumb on the end and we can test the suction test it against my lips so there is some suction there so that means that end seal isn't totally borked which is good because I don't think I can get that out of there without breaking the pen I don't know of a solution to keep this in place I don't know I have to think about that but I think I'm getting hear that popping noise I'm getting that vacuum seal 
So, next steps. Well, I think next steps, now that I've got a vacuum seal, are going to be polishing up that section, cleaning up that feed, polishing the nib, and giving the nib a test. So that nib looks very nice now, and it looks very nicely aligned as well. Uh, so now I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, polishing compound on that feed and uh, polish just the visible part of that ebonite feed up, and I'll polish up the section as well. And this polishing compound gets off all the stuck on ink as well, but because it repels water, I'm going to make sure after I polish this up that I soak it well. You soak it in a little bit of water with a drop of dish soap like Dawn, which is a surfactant, which will allow the ink to flow, water to flow. It's starting to polish up pretty nicely. Some edges there they have to get at. See all that old ink we're getting off of there. These are brittle, so we have to be careful we don't snap it. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Pretty shiny. So I'll go back in the ultrasonic and let's get at that section. Use the tapered end of a paintbrush just to hold it in place and give it something to grip with. There, that's looking nice. So I'm back in the bath with you, and then we'll see about polishing up this cap and barrel. It's uh, pretty scarred up, so I'm going to use some 400 grit to polish that down. Uh, I'm going to mask off the gold so we don't ruin that, but it's going to need some serious work. I'm going to leave the imprint alone, so any scarring that's around that imprint is going to have to stay. So I'm going to go at this with some flexible 400 grit sandpaper and see whether I can get down through those deep scratches. Even the breather holes have divots out of them. Look at that. I don't know what happened there. Whether they chipped off or someone tried to jab something through there. I don't know. I masked off the the clip and the cap band as best as possible and we'll see what we can do. Well, I got through a lot of it. You can see there's still some divots there. But I think that's going to do it. So I've gone over the whole thing with 400 grit and I think I've gotten most of those ugly dents and scratches out of it. So we'll go up through the micro mesh from 1500 through to 12,000 and come back and show you the results. Well, there we are. Went through all the steps of micro mesh from 1500 or 1800, can't remember, what is it? 1500 through 12,000 and then added some polishing compound and buffed it up. Uh, when I got down to the, what was it, 6,000, I got down to here, 6,000, I took the masking off and I used 6,000 up, 6,000, and 8,000, and 12,000 on the gold as well to get out any micro scratches that were there, and that worked pretty well. There are a few places where I couldn't get at it because of that clip and the hump there, so there's a few little marks on it, but it's a vintage pen, so what the hell, I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go at the barrel with the same technique, and I've uh, stuck that blind cap on there with a little blue tack just to keep that seam together when I sand because I don't want that edge to get rounded. It's already pretty scratched. And there I've gone over it with the 400 and I've avoided the imprint and there are going to be some indentations that are close to that but I don't want to lose it. The 500 there is already very faint and that gouge at the end and there's nothing I can do about that. That's going to have to stay. And the same with these cap swirls here. Um, they're pretty deep in there, and I don't want to sand down those threads. 
So I'm going to leave those in as well. And we'll go through the process with the micro mesh. Okay, so here we are with the barrel. All polished up. Still got the imprint there. And the 500 too. And that gouge is still there, of course. I got some of that ringing out of there, but that's pretty deep. So I think together, this pen looks pretty awesome now. Look at that. Now all we have to do is put the nib and feed into the section, put the section into the barrel, and then see whether we can draw up any ink and test that nib. Now I'm just heating that section a little bit to get some of that old shellac off of there. You see it sort of peels off when it's heated a little bit. And I use a dental tool on that just to get into those threads. There, and it just peels right off. There we go, so that's nice and clean for the next adhesive. Now I'm just going to take my 400 grit and rough up that barrel section of the feed so that it slides nicely inside the section. Be careful of that tail because that snap off if I grab it. Ah, smell of rubber. It's sliding okay now, but of course, once that nib is in there, it'll be very tight. I find doing this before trying to put the nib back in makes it a lot easier. And we get our nib and line it up with the feed like that. Grip it like that. And then I try to find the path of least resistance. The unusual shape of these feeds makes it difficult to hold on to. Then we need gripping material. There, we get it aligned again. It might be a little bit further out than it was originally, but I'm just gonna test it in the barrel and check for cap clearance. Should have a lot of cap clearance. We should be good to go with that nib. I'm just gonna add a little bit of silicone oil to that section thread. This isn't a permanent solution, but it makes for easy threading and will keep it from leaking right there at the section. Seems nice and tight. There we go. We got the remnants of that blue tack. Tick tack on there to clean that all up. There's lots of polish left in there. Just gonna have to scrape it out, I guess. Now let's weigh this barrel and we'll see how much, if any, ink we can draw up. So this weighs 8.92 grams. Press tear and now we'll see whether all this work has been in vain. Doesn't feel like a terrific vacuum. Oh, I hear bubbles. Oh my goodness. It's not really pushing out any ink. Uh, that's a bad sign. I'll try it again. All right, moment of truth. <laughs> 0.17. All right, so that seal back here isn't very good. It's still drawing up a little bit of ink, but not much at all. Less than a, oh geez, half a converter, quarter of a converter. Oh, getting a little bit better. 0 0.24. See how many dunks is the charm. 1.3. Well, <laughs> well, a lot better than 0 0.1, that's for sure. So we got some ink. So it means to me that that vacuum seal isn't terrific. And I suspect it's this seal back here. It doesn't, uh, when I draw the rod back, it's very loose. It isn't kind of tight. And that seal for the rod going through should be tight. But at least I think we've got it drawing up some ink. Another moment of truth is to see whether it writes. So let's see, this is a Schaefer Feather Touch Balance from what? Late 1930s to 40s? I'm guessing here, 1938 to 1942? I'm not sure. I have to look at my notes again. I had this pegged when I did the introduction, but let's see about some flex. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's a vintage nib, all right. And very, very wet. And a fine line with no pressure. And it gets very thick indeed with a little bit of pressure. Yep, very nice. So it has a little bit of feedback, and when you push it in directions. It has a little bit of scratch to it, so I might smooth it out 
with a little 8,000 to 12,000 micromesh and C. Back from the dead. And what are my thoughts about this restoration? Well, I'm really stoked about this repair. You folks in the UK might say, I'm right chuffed. Not only was I able to resurrect this very dead fountain pen, but I also invented a tool to get the nib and feed out of the section. This was the worst of the four pens that John Summers sent me. And here they are. The first one that I repaired was this Waterman's 100 from 1944. Then I fixed a Parker Duofold Vacuumatic Speedline Filler from 1940 in this beautiful stacked celluloid, rose and gray. Then this gorgeous 1960 Schaefer PFM Snorkel Touchdown. And finally, this circa 1940 Schaefer Balance Golden Brown Vacuum Fill. All four pens were DOA, but are now restored and working. I left this one until last because I was unsure if I could fix it. I was thinking that I might have to send it back to John the way it came. As it is, the balance doesn't hold much ink, but it holds ink and the nib behaves as its namesake would suggest, with a feather touch. The only thing I couldn't fix was the end of the barrel packing seal unit and its mangled threads. This blind cap will never stay screwed down to the back of the barrel again. I've got a bit of a workaround for this. I've added a little bit of my blue tack stick tack just to the inside there, just so it holds it from spinning around or worse, extending during use. This Schaefer Balance vacuum fill would have sold for $5 US back in 1940 or about $110 US today. It might have been part of a pen and pencil set that would sell for about eight or 10 bucks. Here is a Schaefer Balance pencil in a gray stacked celluloid. This balance pencil was from several years before this vacuum fill balance, which you can tell by the different clips. The earlier clip here had the larger ball on it and Schaefer's stamped into it, which dates this pencil from about 1935. In my video of the restoration of this pencil, I incorrectly identified it as being from the 1940s. And there you have it. Thanks go out to John Summers for providing these four wonderful vintage pens for Pen Resurrection Sunday. And as always, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.